welcome back to the shop. I got a little package in the mail today and I wanna take a few minutes to share it with you and show you what's inside this box. This is Lincoln Electric's new Power MIG 260. Now, unfortunately, this machine is slated to be a demo unit here in the Orlando area, but I get to play with it for a couple of days. So I thought I would bring you along for the ride, the unboxing, setting it up, and going through the power panel and, you know, maybe doing a few little welds. So what do you say we cut all the talking and we start cutting into this box? In here, it looks like you got your MIG gun, some spare tips maybe, quick start guide. I'll tell you what, this thing is screwed down to the pallet, so let me gather up some tools, get it off the pallet, and we'll bring you back for a closer look. Okay, so we got it off the pallet, and first impressions, this machine is very robust. It's very heavy duty. When you grab a hold of it, you know you're grabbing a hold of something substantial. Now, ground clamp. The ground clamp itself really isn't anything more than a very simple spring clamp. But where it is solid is in its connection. It has heavy duty copper contacts on each side of the clamp as well as a piece of copper webbing so that you have good electrical contact on both sides of the clamp. That's a bonus. The power cord. It's a number eight cord. Fairly heavy duty. Nice molded plug on the end. It's a standard three prong welder plug. Now here's something that's an idea that's been redone on this machine. On the end, the bottle rack where the bottle goes, it has a tilt down mechanism. That itself isn't brand new, but they have kind of reinvented the wheel here and I think I'm gonna like it. So the way that it works, when you step down on the bottle rack in the back, it tilts backwards. And as it tilts backwards, it gives you a little ramp to roll the bottle up on. Once you're slightly over center, the bottle rack tips forward and kind of locks into place for you to put the chain around it. It makes it nice because you no longer have to lift that heavy bottle up to get it in the rack. The screen on the front of it looks very, very similar to the Power MIG 210 MP. It has a 110 volt receptacle in the front. It looks like it has a canning plug for a push pull gun, has a connection for a remote input, gas out the front, fairly robust on off switch. And then it looks like our basic controls. This is where the MIG wire goes. This is also where they store the MIG torch for shipping. So this is just a standard Lincoln 250M MIG gun. The nozzle and the head feel pretty heavy duty on it. Also inside here, looks like your quick start guide. Looks like it comes equipped with an 035 and an 045 drive roll. So you can run 035 on one side and 045 on the other. Those are the two most common sizes you'll be running in this machine. Now, if this machine is anything like the 210 MP, we will probably won't need most of this, but it's pretty handy for them to give you reference guides to go back to if you ever have any question about where the machine says that it should be set up at. All right, guys, so let's, uh, let's put the, a bottle in the tank. Now, what, what I'm gonna put on here today is just uh, 7525 Argon CO2 blended gas. Here's what comes with the machine. This is the regulator box. It's got the hose in it. So when you open the box, this is what you're gonna see. You're gonna see a uh, adapter coupling if you wanna run straight CO2 gas, some destructions and part and splits, one short hose, and a, uh, a pretty nice uh, Harris regulator setup. It's definitely not the super low end ones like you normally get in the smaller MIG machines. So we'll start off putting the, the bottle on the machine. I was talking to you about the way this bottle loader worked and, and essentially it's like this. You step on the pedal, you roll the bottle up in just off center and it automatically kicks the bottle in. Uh, this is not a brand new idea, but they've kind of reinvented the wheel here a little bit and it really works good. To dismount the bottle, it's the same thing, but only backwards. Turn the bottle, it'll tilt it down, and you can roll the bottle right out. No more hefting the bottle up. So with the smaller 120s, it's not that big of a deal, but when you get to the bigger cylinders that'll fit in this machine, those things are pretty heavy. So what we do is roll the bottle in, kicks it in place. It's got a quick attach chain over here, slide the chain in place, done. Screw the protective bell off, and we'll just put the regulator on. The appropriate sized wrench, 
as the folks over in uh, Australia call it, a spanner. We call it an adjustable, nice snug on there. Now in the back of this machine, there are two receptacles for this. Let me explain to you what they're for. One of them is to just put the gas like you would normally put the gas into a MIG machine. The other one is for when you're using a spool gun. So if you use a spool gun, you have to change from one fitting on one side to the fitting on the other side. So we've got a 120 bottle on here for our practicing. We've got this whole gas set up ready to go. Normally you'd probably run a little bit bigger bottle of gas uh, if you were running this, but for right now for the testing purposes in the shop, this is perfect. This is a 250 amp MIG gun. Uh, it's one of Lincoln's Magnum guns. These are pretty good quality guns. I like them. The consumables on them are, are fairly heavy duty. Now with your gun, they don't give you a whole lot of extra contact tips. As a matter of fact, I think they only give you two. And that's just to get you started because they don't really know what size wire you're going to use uh, for your setup here. All right, so we've got an 035 tip in it. It also comes with an 045 tip. What I like to do a lot of times is I either store my extra contact tips there or this machine has a handy compartment up here in the top where you can store your extra contact tips right in the top of the machine. We won't be using the 045 here in my shop. I, I rarely use it, only when I get to some bigger aluminum wire. So we're set up with an 035 here. Let's look through this machine and see how to, to spool it up. We're going to loosen uh, just the little cinch nut that's in there. And we're going to push this MIG gun all the way in there. We want to push in firmly, make sure that we get all of the O-rings up inside there and we get everything up tight, and then just tighten down that nut. Now, this lever just flips down and it opens up our drive rolls. For the moment, we're done with this. The only other thing we need to do in a minute is hook this remote cannon plug in underneath. But for right now, let's just talk a little bit about what's going on here. Now in a MIG machine, you have drive rolls. Drive rolls push the wire through the gun. The drive rolls need to be the right size for the wire you're using. Let me show you what I mean. We'll slide off this set of drive rolls here. And here's the set of drive rolls. The way these drive rolls basically work is there's a groove. This drive roll has two grooves in it an 045 groove and an 035 groove. If you're going to use 030 or 025 wire, you need to get another set of drive rolls that have the appropriate grooves in it. So we're going to make sure that the 035 groove is showing. So it says 035, and when you read that 035, that means that the correct drive roll for 035 is out. If we flip this over, we see 045, that means that the correct drive roll for 045 is positioned correctly. So we make sure it says 035, slide it up on the machine, and then turn the locking collar to lock it in place. So today what we're going to use for MIG wire is some Lincoln Electric Super Arc L56 wire. A lot of folks ask me, where do I find this stuff? I can't find it in my part of the country, my part of the world, whatever. So what I'm going to start doing is putting a link down below. That link will take you to an Amazon store where you can buy the stuff that I talk about. Anything you buy supports the channel. We appreciate any help you can give us. If you can find it locally, that's fine too. So basically the way this works is we grab a hold of the the keeper collar on here, we squeeze it and it comes right off. And then we put a roll of wire on here, keeping in mind that there's a little stob here at the top that hooks in the back side here. It helps control how fast the wire plays off. Grab the collar again, slide it on, make sure everything's locked in place. I've got to go around the front here and be sure to plug this remote cable in. It's really that simple. And then we're going to power up the machine. So you see when I squeeze the trigger here, you see it run the drive rolls? This is how we're going to run wire, how it pushes wire out to the MIG gun. So a couple of things we want to do first before we start to feed wire. I want to take our nozzle and our contact tip out. We'll save those up here. We're going to need those in a minute. And then we want to straighten out our MIG 
our MIG gun nice and straight as we can. Nice gentle loop or a straight line is best. And then we're going to pull this wire out of here. Now take it from me, from experience, once you take this wire loose, do not let go of it. Because if you let go of it, it's going to spring any sprung all over the place. You're going to have a mess on your hands. Now the wire comes with a pre-bent end, so we need to cut that off. A pair of MIG pliers. And we're going to feed it in our hole here. At the same time, squeeze our gun. And it'll take the wire right out of our hands, and it'll begin to feed the wire right through the machine. So there's a pre-tension nut on this that keeps this from being able to spin too quickly. Sometimes we need to back it off a little bit because this is a brand new machine. And we want to keep this in a nice straight line until our wire comes out. See the wire coming out? Now we'll take our contact tip, feed our wire through our contact tip, screw it down nice and tight. What a lot of you may not know is the MIG pliers, the smaller hole in the MIG pliers, is for gripping a hold of that contact tip and just giving it a nice tighten. We'll put the nozzle on there and spin it down tight. And another thing you may not know, some most folks do, but some may not, that bigger cutout right there in the back of your MIG pliers is for grabbing a hold of the nozzle and just loosening it when it's hot or giving it just a nice tightness. We'll trim our wire off. Now we're ready to go do some MIG welding. All right, folks. So I want to run you through the settings on this machine. Uh, it's very intuitive and I want to show you uh, what it looks like. So we'll power up the machine. When we power up the machine, it's got a really cool graphic that comes across a color display. Um, easy to look at, easy to read, easy to see. There's two knobs down here. This knob adjusts wire feed speed. This knob adjusts voltage. And here you have a home button. So just so you know, these knobs, you can turn them, both of them, but you can also push in on them to make functions happen. So there's three inputs here across the front. So when you turn the machine on, obviously you can see I've already had it powered on. If you just hit the home button, you'll go home. Let me explain how this works. It's real simple. Um, right here, this is a picture of a hand like that right here. When that's highlighted, you're in complete manual mode. You're gonna go by the chart, intuition, tarot cards, whatever you, however you think you need to set the machine, set it here, the computer doesn't help you out at all. Next setting, you move over, this is MIG, it says MIG right here, and it shows you a bottle of gas, welding wire, drive rolls, MIG gun, and your work, your whatever you're going to weld. Now these icons will be important in a minute and I'll show you why. We're going to skip over the next one is flux core wire, standard flux core wire. Notice there's no gas with that because flux core wire, you don't have gas. Again, wire, drive rolls, MIG gun, and your work that you're welding. The next setting is flux core arc welding with gas or dual shield. So you use gas and flux core wire, drive rolls, MIG gun, your work, whatever you're welding. Right here, spool gun. See the picture of the spool gun, spool gun to the works, same thing. These icons become important in a minute. Push pull gun. Now you see the gun with the drive rolls here and these drive rolls. It says push pull and you've got a bottle of welding gas. Next setting says load and the icon is a picture of a memory card and basically you can preload into this machine all your settings. So all you gotta do is just come from the memory, hit boop and go and it's however you preloaded the machine. And the very last icon is configure. I'll show you what configure has in it. Uh, turns the remote on the front, this icon does on and off. This is the brightness control. We can make the, the screen brighter or dimmer, however we think is best. Next one is measurement. You can go from metric to uh, English. Language, right now the machine has three languages, English, Spanish, and French, I believe. I'm sure as time goes on, they'll probably put a couple other languages in there. Uh, right here is factory reset. So if you get this machine so screwed up that you can't figure out how to get back to where you started from, you can reset everything back to the factory settings. And then this is an information. It's a capital I, like Incredibles. You hit that, it tells you your software version number, your motherboard number, all the stuff in there. So for diagnostic purposes, they can have you go there and pick it out. So we'll go back to the home screen. We'll select a process because we're going to do some test some MIG here. 
So again, this is the manual mode. We're going to go over to the one that says MIG. That's this one. It says MIG right here. And we're going to select it. So we just push in on this knob and we've selected it. Now notice the roll of wire is flashing. It's asking is it steel wire or stainless wire. Well, we're running ER70 wire, so we're going to select steel. Then it's going to ask us, notice the drive rolls are flashing. It's going to ask us what size wire do you want to use. So pretty simple. 035 wire is what we put in it. Now, see the bottle flashing? Bottle flashing says, are you running argon CO2 blend or are you running straight CO2 on an argon CO2 blend? Now it asks, what thickness of metal? And you got a whole bunch of thicknesses of metal. Notice that the thickness changes as it goes up and down. We're going to weld probably 11 gauge, but we'll choose 10 gauge. It'll run just a little bit hotter. And it wants you to confirm that the, the electrode is positive polarity. And then ask you to confirm it right here. What it wants to do is because when we use flux core wire, we have to reverse it. So if we want to confirm that it's positive polarity, it is. Boom. The machine just set everything for you. So a couple things that are neat and I want to point out to you here. Wire feed speed's 250 inches a minute, 18 volts. You had to do nothing. The computer figured it all out for you. Now notice there's a little green line here and a little green line right here. I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, but the center of both of those green lines is a white dot. And what that white dot allows you to do or, or shows you is that you can adjust out of parameter. You can start to go out of parameter and that white dot will stay in the green and start heading down towards the red. As long as the white dot stays in the green, it's an acceptable weld parameter. Okay? Same way this way, right? Acceptable weld parameter, except wait. Watch what happens when we go too low. All of a sudden, the white dot drops into the red. The numbers turn red. They're saying, hey, dummy, there ain't no way that's going to work right. We'll let you weld like that, but you're going to mess something up. So we can go back to, uh, I believe it was 250, 250 inches a minute at 18 volts. Uh, when I was adjusting this one, did you notice that the voltage was changing? Right? They're synergistic. Like one, when you adjust one, it knows that if you decrease the wire feed speed, you need to decrease the voltage. So it tries to keep you in the exact perfect arc right out of the gate. And what it'll allow you to do, let's just say that for whatever reason, I know that my setup here runs best at 240 inches a minute at 18 volts. Notice this voltage drop down. Well, if I come back and readjust this voltage to 18 volts, this doesn't readjust. So you have you can adjust them independently because I know for whatever reason that that works perfect for me here in the shop. It'll allow you to weld and not try to fight you on it. Now, we happen to know that 250 is what the computer says. Oh, wait, look, it automatically adjusted you back to 18 volts. Now, here's something that's really, really neat, oh, and this is something to pay attention to. So this is called Arc Effects, and this is something that's new for Lincoln in this machine. It's ridiculous. I, I love it so much. So look at this little weld, this little fillet weld. You can see the white weld nugget in the middle. You see the little MIG gun right there. So watch what happens when I start dialing this number down. Watch this white right there. So you go down, see how much smaller the weld bead gets? Now let's go the other way. We're starting to jack the wire feed speed way high. Look how big the weld puddle gets. So what it's going to show you is how your settings are affecting the weld as if you had x-ray vision. So same thing here. When we adjust the voltage, you can see the penetration get better or worse. Now look at the 18 volts. Look at the weld profile right at the top. When I adjust the voltage up, look, look all of a sudden you get this real concave looking weld, right? Terrible, terrible. It's going to be undercut like ridiculous. But let's go to a real low voltage. Look at the convex humped up weld. You're going to have basically a bead, a, a ropey looking weld because you're too low. So the neat thing about this is that the machine will allow you to weld out a parameter, but at the same time as you make the adjustments, you can see how the adjustments that you make are going to affect your weld. I think that's really, really neat. So this machine has not welded any metal yet. I've got it set where I need it right now. We're going to come over to the bench and try to lay a few beads. So we're going to start off with some 10 gauge material here. I've got a lap weld set up and a fillet weld set up. The machine is already set for the proper material and I took the time to uh, knock most of the mill scale off it with a stripper disc. So we're good to go. Man, do I like that machine. I mean, that machine commands respect. My hand's a little bit unstable. That's, that's all on me. But, uh, wow, if I made two or three passes just to get a little practice with how the machine's running in there, man, that would look like a robot did it. 
Um, I can't really explain what's different about this machine being an inverter machine, but it's different. Uh, if you've ever run the 210 MP, you'll kind of know what I mean. It's a very precise uh, arc. It's very, it's very driven. It wants to weld. I, and, I, and I set the machine right where it said it was supposed to be set. So let's try a fillet. Any imperfections in that is on me. Just the hand not sliding good, not having real great position here where I'm at, although it's not horrible. Uh, we can improve on that with just a some very small amount of practice. It's gonna be hard to say that a robot didn't weld that. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna go set the machine for this quarter inch material and run the same test over here on the machine just to see how it runs. So here we got a quarter inch fillet, machine set at 270 inches a minute, 21 volts. Not bad, not bad at all. All right, start off here with a lap weld and then a butt weld. <laughs> Trying to adjust the speed to see what it liked. It likes a little slower speed. Let's try this butt weld. We're more than 50% penetrated here. So if we did another seam on this side of this butt weld, we have 100% penetration. So folks, first impressions are everything. And let me just say this about this machine. I'm ridiculously impressed with it. It is beyond a doubt the, the most intuitive, innovative, easy to use welding machine that takes you from the, the novice level all the way up to a very experienced welder, somebody that can run a push-pull gun, a spool gun. This machine has the option to set your burn back and your run-in speed, which are advanced options. It's a very, very, very impressive machine. It's robust. It welds like a dream. And I've welded with a lot of different welding machines. And I gotta say, I've spent just this much time that you guys see right here with the machine had no real time to practice with it, kind of get the used to the feel of it, and I am, I am super impressed. One of the things that stands out for me so much is how simple this machine is to use. Literally, a person with no MIG experience or very, very limited MIG experience can turn the machine on and intuitively set the machine to weld. That same machine can take an experienced welder who wants to run spool gun, push pull gun, dual shield, and then go into some advanced process like setting your run in and your burn back. That's impressive. This is all of the welding I've actually done with this machine at all. If I could just do this for maybe an hour, I feel like I could make welds that would give any robot MIG welder a run for the money. I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with the machine. As a matter of fact, I gotta be honest, I want one. I need another welding machine like I need a hole in my head, but I want one. I appreciate you spending some time here with me in the shop this evening, unboxing and doing some first welds with this Lincoln Electric Power MIG 260 MP. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please go down below and hit subscribe. Also click the little bell, that way you get notifications when we put out a video. If you'd like to follow us between our videos and see what we're doing here in the shop, I'm on Instagram as Do Right Builder, and I'm also on Facebook under the Do Right Fabrication Facebook page. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you real soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and like us on Facebook, please. Somewhere down below here is a link. See you soon.